Okay, welcome back everyone. We're ready to resume with the open session of the Advisory Council meeting. Uh, we have five concepts to present to you this afternoon. Two of them are directly related to diversity workforce issues. And um, we thought it would be appropriate to have uh, Vince Bonham give you a presentation in advance of those concepts. So about a year ago, Eric uh, formed, uh, uh, charged Vince with the responsibility to form a working group uh, directly to address the, the issue of workforce diversity um, in, the, in the broadest sense possible. And so the first two concepts that we have for you this afternoon are kind of the leading edge or in initial uh, products of the working group that Vince has formed. I should say that Vince is a member of the intramural research community uh, he is also a senior advisor to Eric Green. So Vance, before you start your presentation, I'm going to invite Eric. Is there anything else you would like to add about your charge to Vance? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rudy. I did just want to say a couple of things to contextualize not only Vance's presentation, but then the two concepts that will follow is that it was striking during the entire two plus year strategic planning process, how many times and how frequently issues of diversity and equity and health disparities would come up. So even at an early stage when we started to synthesize the input, we absolutely knew this was going to be featured in multiple parts of the ultimate strategic vision that was published. And so with that in mind, um, I, uh, turned to my senior advisor in genomics and health disparities, Vince Bottom, and just basically said, get a running start. Let's not wait for the strategic vision to be published and then start acting. This is one of these examples, we should get a running start. And so Vince will tell you the details of the group he put together internally, but this is it. what you are seeing basically now is, the, is um, some of the first products of this internal group um, that really had spent um, the last phase of the strategic plan of is already starting to thinking about implementation of we think is among the most important areas in the new strategic vision. And so it, it is not a coincidence that literally the first things we came out with publicly after the late October publication of our strategic vision in terms of specifics about how we're implementing elements of the strategic vision it is around workforce diversity. And as you will see, and as Vance will say, we sort of had, we had it teed up so that when the new calendar year started, literally the first week of January, we came out with some of the things that Vince is, is gonna describe. And all this was very deliberately choreographed and I really wanna emphasize, reflects the commitment of the Institute to, to move the needle, really um, try to think through with help of counsel and other advisors to the Institute what we could be doing in areas of diversity, equity, health disparities, and so forth. And what Vince is gonna focus on is specifically in the area today, um, is gonna to focus on workforce diversity. So with that, I'll turn this over to Vince. Okay, great. So thank you, Eric. And I am uh, so pleased, Council, uh, to be able to share with you this afternoon um, the new NHGRI Action Agenda for Genomics Workforce Diversity. So um, Eric discussed uh, in his director's report, the 2020 NHGRI strategic vision. Uh, and as Eric just articulated, as you review that strategic vision, you see very clearly in a number of areas, the importance of diversity, both diversity with regards to ancestral populations in research, but also the diversity with regards to the workforce and that our Institute has a, a responsibility to help to lead uh, those efforts. Uh, this vision has highlighted several important areas of guiding principles and values, foundational areas for genomics, areas to break down barriers, uh, and compelling genomics research projects. Uh, but as articulated, one of the major themes is the issue of increasing diversity in the genomic workforce. And this is highlighted in several areas. One is in the guiding principles and values. And here, with regards to the guiding principles and values, we have nine guiding principles and values as part of the strategic vision. And one of them is clearly focused on how do we think about and what is the role with regards to strategic uh, vision for increasing diversity. 
So the one guiding principle and value is the need to champion genomics workforce. And this principle is clearly articulated uh, in this value as the promise of genomics cannot fully be achieved without attracting, developing, retaining a diverse workforce, which includes individuals from groups that are currently underrepresented in the genomic enterprise. And we really explored this issue with regards to the efforts about thinking about diversity in a very broad way, but the needs to increase the diversity within the workforce. But that's not the only area as guiding principles, but robust foundational establishment of our work as an institute. Uh, so we do not see this just as an aspirational guiding principle and value, but a foundation for NHGRI. We've identified uh, sustaining and improving a robust foundation to foster a diverse workforce as a vital area for NHGRI over the next 10 years. And so if you look at this box here and you look at the variety of areas and the highlighting of training and training of a diverse area as an important part for our institute. So as Eric stated, uh, in December of 2019, he asked me to chair uh, this NHGRI committee uh, to develop the plan and to increase the diversity of the workforce. And I'm pleased that we presented this to the genomics community in January of this year. Uh, and this included the publishing of our action agenda, but also a commentary that was published in the American Journal of Human Genetics. And I refer both of them to you. I believe that they are in your uh, council members package uh, of documents to review. Uh, and to the broader community, I refer uh, the action agenda to you. You see here the website on genome.gov, as well as the American Journal of Human Genetics commentary, the reference uh, to this commentary. So what are the goals? Uh, the action agenda sets forth four goals of four NHGRS efforts. The first goal is to develop and support initiatives that provide early exposure and access to careers in genomics. So we recognize that we can't start once an individual is in a, a graduate program. We must go back and look at K-12 and our efforts and activities of what we can do uh, within middle schools and high schools to help to make students aware of genetics and genomics as a potential career area. Uh, and to highlight how do we expose the general public to careers in genomics. So there is a recognition uh, of the early pathway or pipeline responsibilities for the Institute. The second goal is to develop and support training programs and networks that connect undergraduate and graduate education to careers in genomics. Uh, and this will get highlighted today uh, by Dr. Gatlin and her uh, discussions of one of the concepts. Um, but this issue of this importance with regards to what happens within undergraduate education and really exposing those students that are excited about science to careers in genetics and genomics. What can we do to help facilitate them moving from undergraduate to graduate school and then ultimately to careers? So building this network and this connection between undergraduate and graduate education is important in our ability to move forward with the, the workforce. The third goal is to develop and support training, career development, and research transition programs that lead to independent research and clinical careers in genomics. And here we really are highlighting on that ability to, once an individual's completed their postdoc, uh, their, their training within the field, how do we get them to independent careers? And I wanna just highlight for you that we are talking about both research careers and clinical careers. We recognize that not everyone is gonna be a researcher, but that we are gonna need clinicians who are exposed and prepared for the fields of genetics and genomics to be prepared to work uh, within um, various types of clinical settings. And so what can we do as an institute to help to move that forward in a way to have a much more diverse a population of individuals within clinical careers. Uh, the working group highlighted this as a significant problem as we looked at uh, clinical geneticists across the country and the lack of diversity uh, within the field, as well as in the field of genetic counseling. 
And then finally, to evaluate progress toward achieving greater diversity, that we must evaluate our efforts uh, as we go through this process of this action agenda to make sure that we are meeting our targets, uh, make changes uh, as appropriate, uh, so that we are not just waiting to 10 years from now down the road to see what we did. So this is an ongoing process of evaluating our efforts and activities uh, with this action agenda. So I want to highlight here uh, the working group members um, that put in um, biweekly meetings that we had over a nine month period to prepare this action agenda. These individuals are from all areas of the Institute, including our intramural program, extramural program directors, and our office of director. And I just wanna acknowledge and thank them for their hard work uh, and their important work to getting us to the stage that we're at today. And so this is just the beginning. Uh, and as you hear the two concepts that are presented today, uh, and as we move forward, um, we will be coming back to you on a regular basis to update you on, on things that are happening with this action agenda as we extend the action agenda to efforts in our intramural program and our office of the director. Um, we will bring that back to you to let you know what is going on. But I wanna highlight that one key component of this action agenda is partnership with other organizations. So we're already uh, partnering with uh, three professional societies, the American Society of Human Genetics, uh, the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics, and the National Society of Genetic Counselors, as they are leading a survey to better understand the landscape of the genetics and genomics workforce today, but working with them in collaboration. We will also be working with other professional societies uh, and industry and with academic institutions. Uh, it's gonna take all of us working together to actually make the kind of change that we hope to make. Uh, so with that, I'll take any questions uh, and then give it over to my colleagues. Great. Thank you, Vince. Council members, any questions for Vince? All right. I don't see any hands up, so we're going to afford. Uh, oh, Sharon. Sharon, you're on mute. There yeah, you go. It, my mute button is buried. Um, ben, thanks so much, and thanks for all the efforts. I did have a question about the pipeline um, yes. issues, and, and I can speak more from issues related to women in academics, where people often comment on the pipeline, but in fact, women have been more than 50% of biology and medical school MDs, PhDs and MDs for I think it's 30 years or something. Um, and so I, I do wonder sort of how do you balance the pipeline versus people leaving or being discriminated against as they sort of move forward uh, with regard to your plan? Yeah, so one of the areas that we highlighted in the action agenda is um, that we need to focus on what can we do to help to increase the number of women and senior leadership positions within the field of genetics and genomics, where there clearly is a, a lack of, of women when you think about senior positions. And so we will target our efforts and activities on those areas where two, one, where we think we can make the most difference and two, where there's clearly uh, a lack of diversity. So taking your comment into consideration, um, you know, we will target uh, our areas around senior leadership around uh, issues with women. Yeah, no, and I'm sorry, just to be clear, I wasn't really talking about women. I was just saying the experience with trying to bring women into the workforce is that the pipeline is not enough. And so I think when you look Got at- it. African-Americans, Hispanic, other, you know, other individuals that are underrepresented, there's also is a tendency to blame the pipeline. And, and I just wanna make sure you're sort of encompassing the fact that the pipeline itself is not enough. No, I, I totally agree with you. And I, the broader issue of culture is a, a part of this, you know, development of this action agenda is how can we make um, the community much more inclusive and welcoming of individuals from diverse backgrounds. So, uh, you know, one of the things that's clear is there's a lot of, of individuals who are really excited about the field, 
but don't, don't always get the opportunities. And so what can we do as an institute working with our partners, including you know, investigators to help to, to create a culture that's much more inclusive? Okay, I've got Olga and then Hal. Go ahead, Olga. Related to that, I'm wondering if you're thinking at all about also um, looking at uh, additional barriers, like for women, for example, childcare, right? Where, you know, women are traveling a lot less because they're in child, you know, they need to be at home. So then obviously they're going to raise. I have a feeling this is not based on data, but based on anecdotal evidence that for a lot of minority, especially first generation situations, right? Like there may be helping care for aging parents. There may be similar things regardless of uh, gender as well. Uh, and so are you at all thinking about basically reducing these sort of barriers in addition to all the other issues? So we're thinking broadly and are trying to capture and learn from other institutes and empirical work that NIH has initiated and funded about some of the challenges. And clearly, you know, this has been a challenge that's been uh, highlighted with regards to the current pandemic we're in and, and the impact it's having. Um, so as we go forward, we need to think about different strategies for different target populations and different stages of an individual's career. So I recognize that, you know, clearly the pandemic is identifying that. So this is clearly in the broader scope of how we work with uh, professional societies and organizations and going forward, that something we should be aware of. And thank you for all your work on this. Great, thank you. Hal, go ahead. <clears throat> uh, yes, Fence, uh, thank you for your important work in this area. Um, to build upon uh, comments by Sharon and Olga, uh, I'm wondering if there's uh, any effort to identify minority individuals who have entered our pipeline, but then who have gotten lost uh, along the path to a sustained career in genomics and genetics. Um, if we were able to identify them and engage them, we might learn more about uh, where the system is failing um, many individuals. No, I think that's a great point. As part of our development of the action agenda, we had an opportunity to do uh, focus groups with uh, early stage individuals within the field. And we heard some really important themes uh, from um, those individuals that are, have gotten incorporated in the action agenda, but will be part of our work going forward. I also think, um, and I'll identify clinical medical geneticists. Um, we've tried to identify individuals who are from certain backgrounds uh, across the country so that we can have focus groups and have conversations with them to learn about what was successful in their path in reaching their careers and what kind of barriers they have had. So our ability to continuously um, listen and to, to learn how we can modify our action agenda, highlight areas and opportunities um, by engaging with those that are in the field and those that um, have moved on to other areas um, will be extremely important. Okay, last call for questions for Vince. So I look forward to coming back to, to update you on the action agenda. Uh, and I know my colleagues will now present two concepts. Thank you. Vince.